Welcome to Beauty Wellness. Um, I'm so excited today because we're gonna be speaking to the incredible Olympic athlete and co-captain of the Australian athletics team, Stephen Solomon, all about running. Stephen, I don't know if you wanna give a little bit of an introduction to yourself, kind of who you are and, and a bit of your journey. Sure, thank you so much for having me before I, before I begin. Um, a little bit about me, I'm Steve Solomon. I'm 26 years old, uh, living in Sydney, Australia. I was born and raised in Sydney, but spent uh, six amazing years over in America, uh, completing my undergrad at Stanford University and then going on to a master's degree at, at the University of Duke. Uh, I was also a student athlete while over in America, so I had a great time competing in the NCAA and have since just moved back to Sydney about 18 months ago and now spend my days training for the Tokyo Games, which are coming up next year. And then I also work full time at Uber Eats on the um, on the enterprise side of the business. So I lead a busy life, but um, really uh, passionate, you know, passionate, very passionate about wellness and, and health, and and obviously needing needing that in my own life to to get to where I want to be athletically. But then also just as a person, I think you know it's very important that we're we're healthy and well. So it's a pleasure to be on this and uh, helping everyone out today. It's such a pleasure to have you. <laughs> so let's go right back to the beginning um, of kind of like the, the sort of seed of where this entire journey started, which is kind of your inspiration to, to begin running and, and kind of begin that journey. Yeah, I think I was, you know, as, gr growing up as a kid, I, I played every sport I could. Uh, there was no one sport that I was um, locked into. I, I played cricket, I played rugby, I played tennis, I played soccer, anything and everything. I just loved sport uh, growing up. And it wasn't until I was about 16 that I decided to devote myself to athletics. Um, and that story kind of came about by way of introduction to a woman by the name of Thera Divoskina. And um, Thera became my first coach, my first proper coach. Now, of course, I was running before the age of 16, but I was never training. You know, I, I was kind of just a, a fast soccer player, put it that way, uh, or football player. And, um, and so I, I met this woman, Fira, who had come from the Ukraine. She was a refugee from the Ukraine who fled the Soviet Union and, and landed in Australia. And she was a great coach and a, and a famous coach while she was in the Ukraine. But when she got to Australia, she spoke no English and she had no intention of learning English, she was just going to work, you know, back of the back of a shop as a seamstress and, um, and kind of just flee, flee life in the Ukraine. And while she was in Sydney, one of her former athletes who was on holiday and vacation here bumped into her in the street completely randomly and, um, and said, Fira, like, what are you doing here? And she told the story. And the next question was like, who are you coaching here? And she said, I'm not coaching anybody. And he said, that's unbelievable. Like, how do they not know you're here? And she goes, I don't speak English, you know, I've moved on. This is, this is, this is just my new way of life at the moment. Um, and this guy didn't accept that. She, he said, Vera, you are too good a coach for you not to be coaching. You are a coach. Um, and slowly Vera then be able to, you know, she, be, she began to take the confidence to, to learn English and to build a training squad out here to which I joined when I was 16. And, um, and I just fell in love with it. I just fell in love with the people I was, training with you know everyone I was everyone was older than me I was I was the youngest in the squad um so I was 16 the next um person in age to me was about 24 so it was a little bit of a gap so all of a sudden I found these like mentors you know these older guys and girls to kind of shape my development uh and I also found a, a group of people and a coach who just believed in me and you know I was very fortunate to just find myself in a place where I loved being and was able to fit in nicely and, and kind of let my natural talent, my natural athletic talent be uh, guided by, you know, this mastermind of a coach in Fira, but then also be nurtured by this great training squad in, in what we call team Fira. And that's kind of the rest is history. I've never left. So from there, what kind of kickstarted your career as a professional athlete? Obviously you've got this amazing coach and you're kind of training professionally, but where was that kind of turning point where you were like, right, this is it, I'm gonna go pro? It's a really nice question. I think in my sport, uh, which is different to a lot of sports, is I'm competing in a world that's purely uh, quantitative. You know, it's, 
it doesn't matter how you get to the finish line as long as you do it before everyone else. So in that way, it, it makes becoming pro a little bit easier because when you're, t- when you're ready time-wise, um, you know, you get entry into, into the professional races and you effectively turn pro. So that uh, journey started for me when I was 17 and got invited to my first pro meet, uh, which was down in Melbourne. And I, I remember being very excited and, you know, telling my, my parents and they were very excited for me. And my, my father flew down to, to watch the race and, and I was, yeah, just 17 at the time. And, and, and I, and I won that race, my very first pro race, I um, was able to take the victory and that kind of threw me onto the scene. And then a few months later, I, um, I won my first national championship, my, my first open national championship. So that made me the fastest 400 meter runner in the country. And qualified me for the world championships uh while i was still in high school so that pro life came very quickly for me um it was it was just yeah like we were talking about earlier a product of having some natural genetics mixed with a fantastic coach and a great group of people i enjoyed being around just took took me pro probably quite 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 quickly amazing and and kind of how is has going pro and your your career and and your passion for what you do impacted your own kind of journey to find well-being generally in life i think you know you know being a professional athlete is extremely difficult you know we kind of see the glamorous side when you get to see us on the track you know in olympic games or running in front of 50 60 70 80 thousand people um it's even better than we win. You see the glamorous side and there's, we can talk about the losing later, but you know, the behind the scenes life of a professional athlete is very difficult. You know, it's a lot of planes, you know, in a given year, I'll be on 50, 60 planes. Um, It's a lot of hotel rooms. It's a lot of meals um, in foreign countries, um, mostly by yourself or with kind of a select group of people. You're away from family and friends for a long period of time. Like it's not, it's not a super glamorous lifestyle as, as it all appears when, when you see us on TV. So that's where um, physical and mental wellness kind of steps in. Um, physical wellness comes about making sure that you're able to compete because one of the worst things as a professional athlete is the inability to compete through injury or, or illness. So you really need to try and make sure that you're kind to yourself to make sure that you're healthy uh, physically. And then from the mental side of things is, you know, we push our bodies too hard for us not to be able to be there mentally. Um, you know, you, in my sport where the margin for error is hundreds, sometimes thousands of a single second, you have to be 100% in the game uh, at any given time. So you learn great self-awareness through that. And that's kind of where my journey has started with kind of the wellness space is through my athletics. How do you think that that kind of going on a similar well-being journey um, and and kind of engaging with training more regularly and and kind of really focusing on your your physical and mental well-being from an exercise perspective can benefit other people's mental and physical well-being? I I mean I've seen it myself. You know, it was I started professional track and field when I was sixteen, and prior to that, I hadn't given enormous thought to physical and mental health. I kind of just took it for granted. I, you know, I was very lucky growing up, you know, physically, I didn't have too many injuries. Uh, Mentally, I was always strong and confident. um, And, you know, was able to get through my teenage years, you know, pretty unscathed there. You know, it's kind of when you step into the professional scene, it's, um, you know, it, it becomes a lot more clear of the importance, Um, you know, and, and it starts from the very small things, you know, sleep, um, you know, I have to prioritize my sleep, you know, I have to make sure my body's recovering. But the other benefit of making sure that I'm rested is that I'm, my body's at ease. Um, you know, I'm giving it the proper break, you know, I'm, I'm doing so because I, I want to have a performance benefit from it. But the, co- the other consequence is like, I just am rested. Um, and I think also as a professional athlete, you become very self-aware of your body you learn to listen to your body very closely and you learn to pick up on signals um, that might be suggesting that you're away from any equilibrium point. And that's really accelerated my journey through um, being healthy and happy is being able to recognize when I'm not um, and be able to understand where it's coming from, where the stress is coming from, and then go and address that. Whereas 
I think where a lot of people find difficulty and it's just something that I've been lucky to find through my professional athletics is learning to listen to themselves, identify, you know, what they're feeling, why they're feeling it, where they, where, where those feelings are coming from. And then also having the tools and the support network around them to, to help them through that. I think that awareness is, is so important. Like being able to both recognize it in yourself, but also having that, that kind of support system around you. Um, and I think that that's something a lot of people don't realize. Um, I think it's really valuable to kind of learn how to recognize these things within yourself. Um, and also to kind of have people that you can rely on to help you when you do. Um, I think, you know, whatever stage of, of, of kind of fitness level that you're at um, and kind of exercise that you choose to do, um, that can be really, really helpful, but also kind of having a support network um, and kind of awareness of yourself in terms of your overall, overall well-being is, is really, really important. Um, I wanted to ask you kind of a fun question, um, which was it's kind of around your, your career. I'd love to know sort of obviously you've had this exceptional career for over a decade. You've competed for Australia and, you know, apart from the Olympics, things like the Commonwealth Games. Um, I mean, it's really, really been incredible. Um, and out of all of those wonderful things that you've done, what has been your highlight? My highlight, and, I, and it comes very easily, and I enjoy talking about it, and I enjoy getting reminded of what it is. So thank you for giving that to me. But um, my favourite moment in athletics actually came a few hours after I ran in the final of the Olympics in London. And I'd cleared drug testing, and I'd, you know, the, the event was about nine o'clock at night. So by the time I got back to the village, it was about midnight. And um, I dropped my bags straight off at the Olympic Village, and then walked just outside to the Westfield Dropping Centre, which was just outside the Olympic Village in London, and met up with family and friends who had travelled uh, from all over the world to, to watch me run. And we, we, we had dinner at the only place open at the time, and it was, you know, some pub. And it was just probably the happiest that I've ever been. And it's, it was just a combination of my personal happiness, but just to see how happy everyone else around me was. Um, you know, that was just an incredible atmosphere of um, love and support and, you know, recognition of this journey that I've been on, but was able to take so many other people along with me on um, in that uh, Olympics at my first Olympics in London. That, yeah, nothing has come close to, to that in, in both an athletic sense of happiness, but also just life. That was just a beautiful, um, a beautiful thing. I can imagine that that, that was really, really beautiful. And, and it kind of leads me on to my next question, which is, is, kind of, is, is that sense of community that you've built over your career and, and that kind of inspiration from for and, and from other people, what you love most about what you do, or are there, are there other elements that kind of you, you really kind of value? It's a good question. You know, it's one that, you know, the older I get uh, and the longer I spend in the sport, the more I treasure the community aspect. And I think you take it for granted a little bit when you start, um, you know, you're kind of very much in your own head. You're, you're, you're a new person in a new environment. So you're just kind of finding your feet. But motivation throughout my career has changed at, at many different points. And definitely a very strong motive of mine at the moment is how can what I'm doing on the track impact um, various communities, whether it's uh, the athletic community itself, you know, whether it's um, the sporting community at large, whether it's, um, you know, my local community at home, you know, that's the wonderful thing about sport is I get to wear so many different uniforms. You know, I get to wear my club, my local club uniform. I get to wear my sponsor uniform. So there's a community there. I get to wear my national uniform, which is obviously the largest community that I'm able to compete for. Um, there was a competition where I got to represent the Asia Pacific. So I got to represent, you know, an even bigger community. So I think it's all kind of centered around, um, being able to share the journey that I'm, I'm on because I, I appreciate it from two lenses. One, not everyone can do what I do. So I'm very fortunate to be able to, uh, represent myself and my community in the ways that I do. But then second to that is just because you can't do it doesn't mean you should be, um, silenced uh and, and kept in the dark on what what that community is about so it's trying to shine the light and, and give an experience to those who, who won't have what i have and hope that they can learn from 
the things that work for me. I hope they can learn from the things that don't work for me. I hope I can be someone in my community that people can respect for trying to achieve something that, you know, statistically you shouldn't probably try and achieve and that's being the best in the world. And, and you are currently building that community, aren't you? Um, specifically around your journey to the, the Tokyo Olympic Games. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Definitely. So one of the things that I realized, you know, of late is I love social media. Um, you know, I relied on Facebook when I was studying in America to connect with my friends and families back home. I live off WhatsApp, um, you know, a messaging service that I can stay in touch with everyone. I love the platform that Instagram has given me to be able to reach people from all over the world. But my big problem with social media, um, and I wish it wasn't true, but it, 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 it's an unavoidable truth, is that my audience is a public audience and a public audience to me are strangers. I, I don't know the thousands of people that, that are following my journey on, on Instagram. And in the same way, Amabel, that when you're speaking with strangers and you're conducting yourself with strangers, you, you, you struggle to just be yourself. You know, you, you have to be reserved in what you say and you don't feel the sense of trust and safety and community um, when you're dealing with strangers as you do when you're dealing with friends or with people who are familiar. So one of the things I realized is that there's so much about my journey that I want to share. Like there's so much that I know my communities can take away from when I talk about how to deal with failure, when I talk about how do you push yourself when you're tired and you don't want to, because we're all human athletes, professional athletes are, are just, we're, we're normal humans. Like we really are. And you know, we're not that, that side of us has never been able to be seen because, you know, for a few reasons, but one of them being the, the right environment for us to kind of express vulnerably express, um, the things that we're working on, the things that we're happy with, the things that we're not happy with, um, our reactions to things that are happening in the media, all these kind of things uh, are greatly censored through this public forum. So what I've decided to do in light of that is create a private community. Um, so put a barrier to entry, um, which is a small fee. It's very, very affordable. It's you know $5 a month. And what that does is it brings you into my community and it brings you into a space where I feel comfortable that I can get to know you. You know, I can have email correspondence. I can ask you questions personally. You can ask me questions personally. And I'm able to build content um, that's, that's done so from a place of heart and trust and safety and share those, those learnings and share this journey with a, a community of people who are invested in it. And, um, also a group of people who are, who are there for the right reasons, because that's the other uh, unfortunate thing with social media is there's, there's always those people out there who are, who are just having a bad day and want to project that energy onto you. And it's not something that, that I or, or many other professional athletes are willing to, to do very often. You know, sometimes we might open up on social media, but it's occasionally, I don't, I don't want to do it on the off chance. I want to create a community where, you get to see my entire journey. You get to see the highs, you get to see the lows, you get to see how I'm thinking, you get to see what I'm not thinking about um, and all the stuff in between. So I, I, I've had a great start. You know, the, the people that have joined, uh, I've heard really good feedback from at the moment and um, I'm really looking forward to, to bringing them and a lot more onto the uh, journey of Tokyo because I know the amazing highs that, that the Olympic Games can bring because I had such success in London at the London Olympics in 2012, but I also know the excruciating painful lows of what the life as a professional athlete is in when I failed to qualify for the Rio Olympic Games by four hundredths of a second. Um, so I've, I've been at both ends of the spectrum. I know what the spectrum is and I'm hoping that I'll be able to share, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of value with, with this community that I'm, I'm creating on my, on my right road to Tokyo. Absolutely. And, and I think having that perspective of, of both kind of, you know, the ups and the downs is really, really invaluable and, and really, really helpful for people. Um, I was going to ask you a kind of a, a cheeky question. Um, if you could give us maybe like a little taste, I know that kind of you're building this private community, but obviously, you know, um, for, for kind of the community of people that, that I'm speaking to who might be interested in also joining your community. Um, 
and um, specifically kind of around around running. I was wondering if you could kind of give us some some good tips on on kind of how we can start on that journey and, and improve or even begin there. What what do you recommend? I think the the first thing I recommend to to people who enjoy running or are thinking about getting into running is understanding that the running is a full body exercise and and by definition running is hard you know a lot of people i think are put off by running because they do it for a few minutes and they're exhausted um but that's just they don't know how to run and what, what i mean by that is you know i look at running i look at the angles of my feet i look at how far my arms are swinging forward i think about how i'm breathing you know i'm thinking about how high my knees are coming up like there are so many different elements to running which make it such a beautiful motion beautiful art and you know really a primal movement of ours, which is why I think there is such a mental side of running. You know, it's a very freeing movement. Um, my biggest advice would be find a way to enjoy running. You know, there are so many ways, especially when you're starting, uh, where running can feel intimidating, it can feel sore, it can feel uncomfortable. Um, you know, you typically run in public. You know, there are a lot of people who are uncomfortable exercising in public full stop. Um, let alone when they're doing a movement like running, which is a full body movement and they're not sure how they're looking. So my biggest piece of advice is knowing that it's uncomfortable for everyone and just being okay with that, that no one actually cares. You know, people are going out and looking at you and saying, I'm just happy that that person's exercising. Like that's what I think when I see someone running and you know, I'm, you know, one of the, the best runners in the world and I don't like to, to kind of gloat about that. But what I, I, I use it to illustrate a point, I can find things wrong when I see people running in the street. You know, there's almost every runner, because I can see it in myself. So if I can see it in myself as someone who runs, you know, 40, 50 kilometers a week, um, then I promise you I can find it in other people. And what I'm thinking when I see, you know, these, these technical faults or whatever, is not, oh, they're doing it all wrong. It's, good on them like like i'm like good on them and i get energy from it and i think the vast majority of people are the same so we we put all these thoughts in our head of why we can't do something because we're worried about how we're going to look or how other people are going to look at us my advice is no one no no one no one is looking at that you know people are looking at you for your ability to move people are looking at you for your decision to do something that's hard so get out there, find a squad, find a training environment that you like. One of the great things about running is almost everyone can do it physically. So there are plenty of communities around. Uh, introduce yourself, be bold, be brave, make the step. And, you know, I really do believe that you'll feel a great sense of wellness from a mental standpoint of just being able to move, but also from a sense of community because running is a very communal event. Uh, very communal sport and it's also something that you can do anywhere in the world so if you pick up and move you're immediately going to be able to find a run community that will accept you thank you so much and also for people who are kind of interested in, in your community and how they can join and also where they can kind of follow you online do you want to let them let them know definitely, definitely. so you can find me on instagram it's steve solomon 10 so steve like steve Irwin, your favorite old australian solomon like the king and then the number 10. Um, and once you find me on Instagram, you'll be able to find in my bio a link to this Patreon community that I've set up, this private community. And if you're anyone interested in self-improvement, if you're interested in just generally what does it take to make you know the Olympic Games, um, if you're interested, if you have kids who are involved in sport, you know, uh, getting some advice on how to to, to interact with them. You know, one of the things I speak highly of in my community is how do you interact with professional athletes? Um, because, you know, we can be quite different people to interact with at different times. Come along. I'd love to welcome you in. And again, Amabel, thank you so much for uh, having me on today.